in the previous lesson, we wrote and executed our first bit of Ruby code, and we ran it by using the code runner extension within VS Code. In this lesson, I want to show you how we can run this Ruby file from our command line, from our terminal, in other words. So in the setup videos for our operating systems, I showed you the terminal application on a Mac computer and the PowerShell application on a Windows computer. And that is what we're going to call the terminal. That once again is just an application where we can issue text commands to our operating system. And it is there where we can instruct Ruby to run a file or to execute a file in the exact same way that we did within our editor in the previous lesson. So for most of the course, we are going to be able to use Code Runner, but for some lessons, we're gonna to need to transition to the terminal, and I wanna show you how to do that right now. So rather than opening it up outside of our editor, we can actually open a terminal directly within VS Code. So if I go to the very top menu here, you'll notice there should be a terminal option right here. If I click that and select New Terminal, we're going to see essentially an integrated terminal pop up within our editor. So right here we have that panel appear where we saw our output in the previous lesson, and this is effectively a terminal. It's no different than your Mac terminal or your Windows PowerShell, it's just built into the editor. So I'm just gonna click and drag this line right here, and we can do that if we want to expand the size of that panel. So in here, all of the commands that I introduced you to will still work, like ls to list your files and cd to navigate into a directory. So if you've forgotten what those commands are, I do recommend going back and refreshing, all right? Because they're, they're gonna be very important so that you can navigate into the right directory and run the file. So you'll notice it's going to put us within the learn to code with Ruby top level directory. And I want to go into the directory that has the file that I want to run. This is a very common mistake, and that is that a lot of new developers simply think they can run the file from anywhere. This is no different than something like a file explorer in Windows or Mac. You need to navigate into the correct folder where the file is located on your hard drive so that we are able to find it, right? So our hello world file is found within the first folder within our uh, learn to code with Ruby project. So right here, it is this 01 introduction and installation folder. So what I'm going to do is use my CD command to navigate. I'm just gonna write a space and 01 and then my tab, and that's going to auto complete it. And of course, those special symbols are just to allow us to have spaces within the name. All right, and it is once I navigate into that folder where I have the file that I'm looking for that I can actually run the Ruby command itself. So the command is going to be Ruby, and let me blow this up so you can see. It's going to be Ruby followed by a space and then the file name. And everything must be spelled again with a concern for case sensitivity. So our hello world.rb file name is an all lowercase with an underscore. So that's exactly how we're going to write it out. Hello underscore world dot rb. All right. And when I press the enter key, we're going to tell Ruby to run that file and it's going to output the contents of that file, which is hello world. So this once again is the exact same content we saw from code runner within VS code. We're just running the file directly from our terminal, from our command line. And we're going to be using this technique for certain lessons throughout the course where code runner just isn't going to work. All right. So once again, review the basic principles of navigation and things like CD, LS, all those commands we talked about because they're going to be important as you navigate into the correct directory in order to locate the Ruby file that you want to run. Once you find it, it's just going to be Ruby followed by a space and that file name. All right, that's all there is to cover in this lesson. So I will see you in the next one.